Okay, so in the previous lecture, we determined that it is not desirable that a customer places an order through the website and then later needs to be called again by the pizza company in order to work out some details of this order. The manager of the pizza company is very concerned about this and wants to be able to monitor this inefficiency on a monthly basis. The manager wants to know what percentage of cases shows this behavior and wants to drive this percentage down as low as possible. For that purpose, we are going to create a key performance indicator in our dashboard so that the manager can monitor this. So I'm going to show you guys how to create such a KPI using PQL in Salonis. The first thing we are going to do is to open up a new sheet. So we need to go in edit mode. Create sheet. New sheet. And here I will click on add component and I will select OLAP table. I'm going to give this table the following name. Website order combined with customer call. Next. I will click on add KPI. As you can see, this opens up a menu of several options I can choose from. But what I'm interested in now is the custom KPI. So I will click on this. This will open the full PQL editor. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is to give this formula a specific name. I will call it website plus call. As you can see, I can select a lot of different operators and variables over here. We can also see that as I click on this menu over here, the different functions automatically appear in this space over here. So this is the PQL script. At this moment, I just clicked on a few random operators. So obviously this script here is not going to work, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like. And of course, now, this wide variety of PQL statements might seem a bit overwhelming at first, but don't worry. There is also a much more user-friendly way to work with PQL. You see, there are in fact two modes in which we can create PQL statements. The code editor and the visual editor. We are now in the code editor mode. Let's just uh, delete all this random code over here. And then we'll move to the visual editor. Hi there. If you are watching this video, it means that you're interested in learning how to scale process mining. In order to be able to scale process mining, we have to engage in multiple domains of expertise, knowledge, and know-how. Process management, data science, information technology, automation technology, change management. And that's without even considering process mining as a discipline on its own. Wow, there's a lot to unpack here, and it might seem a little overwhelming at first glance. But don't worry, we've got you covered we have compiled a cheat sheet on how to scale process mining. In 15 minutes, this document will provide you with a high-level understanding of the 10 
key components needed to scale process mining. And we're giving it to you for free. All you have to do is click on the link in the description of this video and claim your cheat sheet. Great. Now let's continue your journey to learn how to scale process mining. We are now in the code editor mode. Let's just uh, delete all this random code over here. And then we'll move to the visual editor. The visual editor will guide us in creating our desired KPI in a user-friendly manner. Our manager is interested in the percentage of cases. So I'm going to select this option, the ratio. I will select activities. And here I'm just going to click on a few different buttons just to give you guys an idea of all the options I can choose from. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the activity that has to do with the order from website. I'm also going to select the activity call customer because it is this combination of activities that is considered undesirable by our manager. All right, now let's preview what the output will look like. You see here, it's 9%. Good. Now let's see what it looks like in the code editor. This code over here represents the exact same thing that we have just configured in the visual editor mode. Let's uh, check out the preview. 9%, so it's the exact same thing. Of course, a major benefit of this PQL script is that I can just copy paste it as a text and for example, send it to other people so that they can use it for their own purposes. All right, I will now click on done. I will click on done once more. Cool. Now I have a table containing the percentage that we want to monitor. But remember, our manager wants to monitor this behavior per month. So I'm going to add a time dimension to this table. I will go to the dimensions over here and click add. And I will select event time in month. And press done. Fantastic. Now we have created a table in our dashboard that allows the manager to monitor this KPI on a monthly basis. If I don't want to use a table, I can also use other options, such as a line chart. So this simple example goes to show that the opportunities for creating process-oriented KPIs using PQL are endless. If you want to learn more about PQL, feel free to check out the resource section of this course and don't be afraid to just go around and trying out different options in the PQL editor.
Thanks for watching. Hi there. We have compiled a cheat sheet on how to scale process mining. In 15 minutes, this document will provide you with a high level understanding of the 10 key components needed to scale process mining. And we're giving it to you for free. All you have to do is click on the link in the description of this video and claim your cheat sheet.